Hello everyone and welcome to Heart Matters. We are so glad that you've decided to tune into the program today. The stories of music that we showcase here each week are meant to encourage your spirit and ultimately to bring glory to God. Now, we've all gone through tough times at one point or another in our lives, and knowing that someone else has gone through the same situations can actually help us along the way. On today's program, we'll hear from Wavy Andrews and her husband, Bain, as they share a little bit about their story and what they have learned while going through the Valley of Cancer. And also join us on the show today, we have Sean and Lynette Holmes as our musical guests. So kick back and relax for the next little while and enjoy the show.
Closed captioning has been provided by H. Bruce Home Inspections. For more information, call 709-571-0152. Looking for quality products and top-notch service? From lumber to paint and refrigerators to sofa, your local Notre Dame Home Furnishings and Notre Dame Castle Building Centers can help you complete your home, serving you from 16 locations across Newfoundland and Labrador, six days a week. Remax would like to say thank you for allowing us to be a part of the most important transaction of your life. Our mandate is giving back to the communities that serve us. We will be honored to help you with your next move. Call any of our offices today and let one of our Remax agents go to work for you. Scott's Transport Limited is a family owned and operated full transportation company located in beautiful Deer Lake. In business for over 25 years and with a fleet of modern equipment and dedicated team, we service the growing needs of businesses from Newfoundland and Labrador to Ontario and locations in between. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Hi, uh, my name is Wavy Andrews. I'm from uh, Point Leamington, and this is my husband Bain Andrews, and we are both pastors here at the Pentecostal Church here in Point Leamington. In uh, March of 2014, I became sick, uh, sick to the point where I didn't have any energy, uh, la loss of habitat, uh, loss, losing weight for no reason, and just feeling tired all the time. I would go to the church office and. Uh, I would have to come back home to rest for a couple of hours and then I would go back to work again. So uh, I made an appointment with my family doctor to see what was going on, not thinking was anything seriously wrong because all of my life I had issues with my blood. I had low iron in my blood and I was taking medication for that. So I was just thinking that I just needed probably different medication for it. So I made an appointment with my doctor, my family doctor, and I went to visit him. Before I got home that day, the, the doctor had called me. So I knew then was well, something seriously wrong to get your results back so quickly. So he said to me, he said, your blood is extremely low and it's uh, dangerously low. He said a blood count for a lady would be between 120 and 140, but your blood count is 65. So it's dangerously low. So you're gonna to have to come into the hospital in the morning and receive a blood transfusion. So that's what I did. The next morning I went to the hospital and received my blood transfusion. And and after that, I started to feel really good again. I had lots of energy, I didn't feel sick, so just thinking that it was just a issue with my blood, nothing too seriously, uh, too serious, I said, well, everything will be fine now, I'm okay. But it only lasts for about three weeks. After three weeks, I started to get the same issues again. No energy, wouldn't, wasn't able to heat, tired all the time, just feeling I'm well. So uh, by that time, I had developed a cough, an unusual cough. It wasn't like a flu or a cold, it was just an unusual cough. And I would lose my breath when I cough, finding it difficult to breathe. So I went to the hospital in the eMERGE at that time and saw the doctor on call and told him the issues I was having. And he ordered blood work again, blood tests again, and another chest x-ray. And uh, he said, don't leave the hospital, I'll get your results right away. So he, he called me in his office and gave me the results and he said, your blood is extremely low again. And plus you have a serious uh, infection in your lungs. So he said, you have to come to the hospital in the morning for another blood transfusion and some IV meds for your infection. So that's what I did. I went back to the hospital the next morning and uh, got the test done and received my IV meds. and. Again, I start to feel better, thinking it was just a blood issue, nothing too serious. 
And uh, this time it didn't last as long. Probably 10 to 12 days I was back with the same issues again. And by this time the cough was getting extremely difficult. And by that time I was noticing swelling in my legs and feet and around my stomach area. I was experiencing swelling, fluid fell up. So I went back to the doctor again and by this time I was feeling really unwell. And it happened to be the same doctor that was on call, so he knew my situation. So he ordered more tests, some more blood work, and he said, stay in the uh, waiting area, I'm gonna call you back in as soon as I get the results. So he called me back in and he said, uh, I think there's something more seriously going on in your body. So he said, I'm gonna order an emergency CAT scan in Gander for you in the morning. So he said, I'd like for you to get that done and see what the results are. So the next morning I went to Gander and I had my CAT scan done and I was feeling very sick, very tired and weak, very unwell. And the next morning before lunchtime, my doctor's secretary called and, he, and said, your doctor wants to see you at one o'clock. And I knew then that it was something terribly wrong because you don't normally get your CAT scan results back after one day. So the next day we went into the uh, doctor's office and uh, we went in and sat down waiting for him to come in and as soon as he came into the room I knew there was something wrong. I could tell by the look on the doctor's face. Uh, my doctor was a very pleasant person. He always had a smile on his face and he came in with a very serious look. And I said, it's not good, is it? And he said, no, I'm sorry, it's not good. He said, you have uh, cancer and it's lymphoma, a type of blood cancer and you have several mass in your body. You have one on your spleen one on your liver and one in your stomach area. He couldn't tell me what stage the cancer was or what type of lymphoma it was at that time. For, for me, when he said those words, cancer, and knowing how Wavy was feeling at the same time, because it had been a part of our conversation for a couple of weeks almost every day, Wavy was more concerned about, we gotta tell our son our parents, my brother, your family. That was her, her big concern. But uh, I was like her, and that was that. To hear it, it still shocked you, but we weren't surprised, given what she had gone through already. So within those three weeks that I waited for my biopsy report, I became very sick. I had so much swelling on my stomach that I looked like somebody that was pregnant probably nine months pregnant. And I was swelling in my feet and my lung by that time had collapsed. So I was only functioning on one lung. So I made many trips to the hospital to get some relief for that. The cancer specialist came in one night and told us the results of the report and what type of cancer it was, lymphoma. And it was uh, in fourth stage. And when he said fourth stage, he must have saw the look on my face and the fear, I guess, when you hear fourth stage, you think about, well, it's the end. I know the strength that I had was from the Lord. The doctor said it was because I was positive. I know that was some of the reason, but I depended on the Lord all through my cancer journey. And uh, when the doctor came in that night, he said, uh, you will need six chemo treatments. I met two ladies that were very special to me during my cancer treatment. One of the ladies were was in the room with me in the health science. I was in health science for three weeks and she was in the same room as I was. And we became close. After visiting hours with him in the night, we would have uh, great talks and we would talk about the Lord. She wasn't a Christian at the time. But before I was discharged from the hospital, she told me one day that she was, she asked the Lord to come into her heart and she was ready to meet the Lord if, if the Lord didn't take care of her cancer. So there's always positive things that come out of bad things. It's easy sometimes to say, why Lord? When you go through difficult times like cancer, when you go through storms in your life, you can easily say, Lord, I'm a, I'm a Christian and I've been a Christian all my life. And often I thought about uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians when he went through terrible things, but he always said that God's grace is sufficient for us. And that's what I depended on, the grace of God. We will go through things as Christians, but the main thing is to trust in the Lord and to know that God's grace is sufficient for us. Even though Wavy was the patient and I was her uh, support there, 
uh, there were often times when I found myself in the room where Wavy was. There were three other people who were going through their own cancer journeys. I prayed with them. If we can still realize the significance of, of uh, caring for others in spite of what we're going through, uh, it was a blessing to me. The other verse that came to our minds was, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee. They almost become mantras that you, that you go through every time there was a preparation for a chemotherapy, whenever there was some type of, of test, uh, uh, those would be verses that you would go through in your mind to help you be reminded of where your help comes from. After my first treatment, I had a CAT scan done and he came up back with results and he said, uh, you're responding remarkably well uh, to the chemo treatment. You're further ahead than what you should be, really, with the treatment. After my third uh, treatment, I had a video conference call with my uh, doctor and he was amazed. He said that the, uh, the mass that you have on your spleen is shrunk remarkably and the other two is completely gone. And he said, Don, 100%. I was four months doing treatment. And in February of 2015, my, do my cancer doctor in uh, St. John's sent me to uh, Alifax for, a, uh, Alifax for a PET scan. When the phone call came, I said, it's Dr. Jones. And everyone, <laughs> we all just looked at each other. And he said, PET scans like Wavy's being, well, he asked me where I was. Are you still in the city? And I said, no. We're on our way back home. He said, well, he said, listen, I'll make the conversation, I'll make the call very short. Uh, PET scans like wavies are real easy to read because you can't get any better than God. It was July 11th, 2014, on our 28th wedding anniversary is when I was diagnosed with cancer. And life is good now, my health is good, my blood count is up to 140. Uh, in scripture, it tells us that we will go, go through difficult times, storms in our lives, but one thing the Lord did tell us, that he would always be with us, that he would never forsake us when we're going through difficult times. We love hearing from our viewers here at Heart Matters, and we encourage you to get in contact with us. Maybe you have a suggestion for an upcoming show or perhaps something that you've heard on the program really meant a lot to you. Well, you can either stop by our website at heartmatters.tv and send us a message there, or you can contact us through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And by following us on social media, you can keep up to date with all of our info and announcements. Still to come on today's show, To the Point with Ralph Benson, and more music from Sean and Lynette Holmes when Heart Matters returns. From envelopes to tractor trailer loads, Dooley's Trucking caters to all your shipping needs. Capable of meeting all your shipping requirements throughout Newfoundland, Dooley's Trucking is your choice for fast and efficient delivery. Ship with the best, ship Dooley's. My name is Brandon. I'm the owner here at Gander Appliance and Furniture. We sell a wide variety of appliances and furniture, including um, Canadian-made Decorest, Ashley Furniture, Samsung, as well as Whirlpool. Please visit us at 292 Airport Boulevard here in Gander. Also visit us at our location in Lewisport at 1 Fairview Street. Terry's Tents, specializing in custom canvas products, picture framing, embroidery, and printing. Also carrying a wide variety of craft supplies, fabrics, leathers, and furs. Located at 326 Hamilton River Road in Happy Valley Goose Bay.
When you look at this house outside and approach it, one would think it's ready to live in. However, when acquiring a property, the first thing to do is have a home inspection. The inspector knows what to look for. This house was recently inspected only to find out there's much more to repair than meets the eye. Upon close inspection, it was discovered that the basement was a total write-off. Looks like the shifting pug around the property caused a crack right around this brick foundation, making it almost too dangerous to live in. We all know how vital it is to have a good foundation. Our lives need to be built on a good foundation. You may ask, how do I build my life on a good foundation? Well, Jesus Christ answers this question. He used the illustration of two houses being built on two different foundations. Christ said, one man chose to build his house on a strong foundation of rock. The other built his house on the shifting foundation of sand, or we could say pug. Jesus went on to say, those who hear my words and obey are building on a firm foundation. And those who hear but don't obey are building on shifting sand. When the storm comes, it will be destroyed. Following God, you are building your life on a firm foundation. Today, the thought of following God is foreign language. Why would I do that? We all want to make a life for ourselves. The life you are building consists of more than the physical house you live in, or the car you drive, or the job you have. It's all good, but if that's all you're building on, then it can all fall. It would not take a very big storm for you to fall to pieces. Jesus said you build a good foundation when you build on Him. When you listen to what God wants for you. We live in a time when people are forgetting God. I can build without him. I want to make a life but on my own. We have to admit it's not going as good as we would want. Many are realizing we cannot do it without him. Our society is crumbling. We have major issues that will not get better and cannot be ignored. We are facing some big storms and things are very insecure. Maybe you're facing some big storms in your life. You thought if I built my life on money, pleasure, job, family, that you could build a good life without God. But it's not possible. Jesus is warning us, when we leave him out, it will never succeed. The Bible tells us that one of the qualities of wisdom is having the ability to look beyond the moment and see what's coming. Many do not see what is coming. If we neglect God, we can make choices which lead to bankruptcy, addiction, broken relationships, depression, and you feel everything is just falling apart. You wish there was more to life than this. You feel like I just wanted to make a life for myself and how did I get here? When you build your way and not God's way, the foundation cannot hold up. The pressures are too great. Just like this house, it has reached a dangerous point. The pressure on this wall is too great and a huge change has to happen. Maybe your life feels that way today. You feel it can never be repaired. Yes, it may be a big job, but not too big for God. You can still have a good life, a new beginning. If you will make the decision to follow Jesus and build on His Word, he will help you. It's done little by little, day by day, allowing him to be a part of your life. Build your life on Jesus and he will never fail you. It is hard trying to do it on your own. When things seem like they're falling apart, God is there and he will help you. He will keep you if you will put your trust in him and build on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ.
that's old as sleep. But the springtime brought straight to stand tall. But too long the summer without any rain. What's left, Lord, is to have a great fall. So let me Jesus said that the greatest commandment of all is to love the Lord God with all of your heart. I want to thank Sean and Lynette for singing those beautiful songs for us today that help us express our love to Him. I also want to thank Waving Bane Andrews for sharing their story with us as well. You know, cancer has touched each of our lives in one way or another, and its effects can shake us to the core. But be reminded that, just like Wavy said, that God is always with you and He won't leave your side. Well, sadly, our time is gone for today, but we invite you all back again next week. Mm -hmm.